Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 62 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. So at this point, we're getting pretty close to wrapping up the MIDI portion of this course, and I have a few final advanced MIDI features in Logic Pro that I'll be showing you before moving on to advanced audio recording and editing techniques. One of these features that I wanna show you in this video is Smart Quantize. So in this video, I'll demonstrate the difference between Smart Quantize and Classic Quantize, and I'll show you how to use and when to use Smart Quantize as opposed to Classic Quantize. And using Smart Quantize is fairly simple, but I've yet to cover it in this series, so I wanted to make sure that I touched on it in a video in the MIDI section of this course. But before I get to that, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox.io is the ultimate collaboration tool and file storage tool for musicians, songwriters, bands, artists, and music producers. You can upload audio files one at a time or batch upload for sharing stems and multi-tracks. Invite collaborators who can then leave time-stamped feedback on your tracks. I use it for things like production notes and mix revisions. If you're thinking about giving Dropbox the boot, head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so how do you access Smart Quantize? If you select a track or select a region and you open up the region inspector here, you'll see your normal region-based quantization parameters. You can select quantization values here, just as I demonstrated in a previous video. However, if you click on this option here that says Quantize, you'll see there's actually two options in here, Classic Quantize and Smart Quantize. So what is Smart Quantize and how is this different than Classic Quantize? Well, Classic Quantize uses bars, beats, and ticks on the grid to determine where a note should be quantized. So for example, if I were to open up this drum beat here in the piano roll editor, I could look at this and say, okay, I think the best possible quantization value is a 16th note. So I just select all the notes choose a 16th note in the piano roll editor, all of the notes are snapped to the nearest 16th note. And I can also adjust the amount of this quantization with the quantization strength slider. In addition to using the piano roll, you can also do this in the region inspector just by selecting the region, going over to the region inspector. And in classic quantize mode, I could just simply select a 16th note and you'll get the same result. All of the notes are snapped to their nearest 16th note. So that's nothing new, hopefully. The way Smart Quantize works is it allows the MIDI data to be shifted into position based on the combined weight of the proximity to the target grid position. So if I choose Smart Quantize up here, I can apply the Smart Quantization here in the Region Inspector or I can apply it in the piano roll editor. You'll see that this time quantize option here now says smart instead of classic. And if I choose a 16th note, you'll see that all of the notes quantize to the nearest 16th note, but they still sort of maintain a bit of a natural feel to them. And this is because smart quantize takes into account the relative position of all of the MIDI events in the selection that you're quantizing. And what it also does is it doesn't really stack events on top of each other in the same position. They're always slightly offset from each other. So if I were to pull down the quantization strength slider, you'll see that these drift further away from their intended targets. And you'll see that certain notes are actually moving further away from their target when I pull up the quantization strength. And that's because, again, with Smart Quantize, it's taking into account all of the notes relative positions. And it also favors notes with higher velocities. It actually quantizes these more than notes with lower velocities in order to maintain that natural groove. However, you may find with drum recordings like this that the natural groove that Smart Quantize maintains is maybe a little too loose as it is in uh, this drum recording here.
And again, this is due to the fact that Smart Quantize avoids stacking notes on top of each other in the same position. And it, you know, tries at all costs to maintain the relative position between notes, even when they're, you know, meant to be on the same grid line. So you may find yourself doing some manual adjustments if you're working with drums, or you may just find yourself using classic quantize instead, because then you can really snap things directly where they need to go. And then if you want to give it a bit of natural groove, you can pull back the quantization strength a bit. So drums might be one situation where you don't necessarily want to use Smart Quantize, but my favorite use for Smart Quantize is when working with piano parts, especially piano parts that I'm playing in live to a click, and I want to make them still sound like a real player instead of sounding really robotic and overly quantized. Now, one of the other really great things about Smart Quantize is you don't have to quantize to your fastest rhythmic value because it shifts things based on the combined weight of the value you pick, you can actually choose values that are slower than your expected quantization value. So for example, with this piano recording, a 16th note would probably be what I would normally go with because I have some uh, rhythmic spots like here and here where I have notes that are you know supposed to be on 16th notes but what I could do instead is quantize to something like a quarter note or a half note or even a whole note. And smart quantize will quantize those points, but then sort of shift the relative position of other notes in between the target quantization value. So let me let me show you what I mean. It's, it's hard to talk about, but it's easy to see. So I'm going to select my MIDI region here for my piano, switch this over to smart quantize. This time I'll go ahead and just do this in the region inspector. So I'm going to select a quarter note, and you'll see that the notes do indeed shift closer to uh, the intended targets where they're supposed to be on quarter notes, like here, 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 and here. But the relative position of notes in between those quantized points have still been maintained. The other amazing thing about Smart Quantize is it will preserve arpeggiated keyboard rolls like this. And again, just as an example, if I were to use classic quantize and a quarter note, all of the notes are going to snap to the nearest quarter note. It's not going to make any sense because any rhythms that are faster than a quarter note are going to be snapped to the nearest quarter note. Or if I even used, you know, classic quantize and 16th note, I'm going to get something that's extremely robotic and perfectly quantized to the grid. It's going to destroy all of the keyboard rolls as well. Yeah, it's horrible. It's really stale and robotic sounding. So one of the things that's a little confusing about Smart Quantize is that when you choose a quantization value that's longer or shorter than your intended quantization target, all notes are going to be quantized or shifted or moved in some way with Smart Quantize. Even if I choose something like a 1-1 one, one note, which is a whole note, so this is focusing on just quantizing the downbeats of the bars and everything else is just shifted relative in between those points. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it also will play with the length of notes as well. If I pull up or down the Q strength here, so that's before the quantization, that's after the quantization, you could even make the argument that in this particular example, with this particular setting, the unquantized version is better than the quantized version. So play around with different smart quantized values and you'll find that you get different results. So as I pointed out, some of the advanced quantization features are still here. These are different than working in classic quantize. 
And if you don't see these, you can just click the more menu here to open this up. So you have Q strength. This is the same thing as Q strength in the piano roll editor. You have Q anti flam. This one's really helpful because what this will do is it will get rid of flams. So remember what I said toward the beginning of the video is that smart quantize avoids stacking notes in the same position. If you pull up the anti flam, this will just go ahead and stack them in the same position. So you can make less out of your flammed notes or your rolled notes like this by pulling up the Q anti flam. Or if you want smart quantize to do its thing and leave those alone, you can just pull this all the way down to zero, which is the default setting. So that's smart quantize in a nutshell. It's a fantastic way to quantize while still maintaining a human feel in your MIDI recordings. My general rules about quantizing are that if I'm quantizing a keyboard or piano part and I want to maintain that human feel in the recording, I'll always try smart quantize first. And recordings where I want the MIDI notes to be perfectly quantized to the grid, like drums and synthesizers and other elements and electronic music, I'll use classic quantize. For recordings where I want just a little bit of variation, I can go either way, but usually I find myself just using classic mode and pulling back the quantization strength in those situations. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.